In this video, we configure multi-factor authentication with a conditional access policy for Azure Virtual Desktop. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to enforce multi-factor authentication or MFA with a conditional access policy for users accessing Azure Virtual Desktop. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. That helps grow this channel and is greatly appreciated. Check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, hybrid identities with Windows 80 and Enter ID, and Windows 365 with Intune Management available at udemy.com. The links are below. And thank you channel members, your support is appreciated. Back to it, coming up we use a conditional access policy to enforce MFA for Azure Virtual Desktop. Conditional access policies take signals such as a user's group membership or the application they're accessing. Based on that, it applies a condition. In this case, the condition is successfully completing an MFA challenge. Think of Entra conditional access as a type of automation for authenticating and accessing resources. There's a lot of flexibility in how these conditions are applied. For example, we could simply say all logins require MFA, or we can scope the condition to a specific application, location, or group of users. Coming up, we configure a policy that requires MFA to access Azure Virtual Desktop. This way, you could create a conditional access policy unique to AVD access. Conditional access policies require an Entra ID Premium P1 or P2 license. You'll need that in the tenant to follow along. Coming up, we start by finding the AVD application ID. Then we move on to creating the conditional access policy. We'll use the what if tool to verify the policy and review the report only feature. Reporting requires sending Enter ID diagnostic data to Log Analytics. Check out my previous video on how to configure that. Finally, we enable and verify the policy. Let's jump into the Azure portal to get started. Here we are in the Azure portal. We'll start by finding the Azure Virtual Desktop application. Let's go to Enter ID. From here, we'll go to Enterprise Applications. Remove the application type filter and search for Azure Virtual Desktop. There it is, but let's open it to verify. Let's take a look at the last four of the application ID. The last four digits are 8D07. If you don't have this application, it may be called Windows Virtual Desktop. Let's search for that next. We'll go back and search for Windows Virtual Desktop. You may or may not have Windows Virtual Desktop, or you may have two. It depends on how old the tenant you're working on is, and if you've deployed the original version of Azure Virtual Desktop, previously known as Windows Virtual Desktop. The application for the newer ARM Azure Virtual Desktop application used to be called Windows Virtual Desktop. New installations were named Azure Virtual Desktop. So historically, there's been some discrepancies around what the name of that application is. Also, there's another application for Windows Virtual Desktop Classic. That's also known as Windows Virtual Desktop. That's why we need to make sure we're selecting the correct application. And we can do that by identifying that application ID. The good news is that my Azure Virtual Desktop application used to be called Windows Virtual Desktop. Now the name displays as Azure Virtual Desktop. Microsoft must be updating the names to avoid the confusion of having multiple applications with the same name. If you do have more than one, just open up one of them. And we'll look at the application ID. That ends in F3B7. That's the classic AVD application. We don't need to use that. If you've never deployed the classic Windows Virtual Desktop, you may not even see this application. The point of this exercise is to look for the Windows or Azure Virtual Desktop application that ends in 8D07. That application represents the AVD gateway users log into when they connect to AVD. We need to specify that application in the upcoming steps. If the wrong application is selected, the conditional access policy won't work correctly. Next, let's create the conditional access policy that requires multi-factor authentication when a user logs into AVD. We'll search for an open Entra conditional access.
There it is. Go to policies. Notice that I have a policy called MFA required and another for admins. If multiple policies are in scoped, the most restrictive applies. For this example, I've disabled policies so they won't interfere with the demo. If you already have a policy that enforces MFA for all applications, you may not need to add a policy. But for this example, we'll create a new policy. Give it a name. I'll use AVD MFA policy for this example. Next, we select our users. We'll select zero users and groups selected. We have the option for none, all, or selected users and groups. This example is only going to include groups that have AVD access. We'll select users and groups and users and groups. For this example, we'll select the group AVD users. That's the group who has access to Azure Virtual Desktop. We could also exclude users and groups, but we won't use that for this example. Next, go to target resources, leave it set to cloud apps and select apps. Open none under select. We need to find the application in this step. Search for Azure Virtual Desktop, unless your application was called Windows Virtual Desktop. Notice the ID ends in 8D07. That's the one we want. We'll select. Next, go to Conditions and select Zero Condition Selected. Go to Client Apps and click on Not Configured. Change the configuration to Yes. We do want to configure this. Selecting Browser will apply the policy to just the web clients. Mobile app and desktop client will apply to, well, the mobile apps and the remote desktop client. Uncheck Exchange, Active Sync, and other clients. These are not required for AVD or Windows 365. Click Done. And from here, we'll go to Grant, Zero Control Selected. We're going to Grant Access and Require MFA. Notice the other requirements. We could require devices to be marked as compliant or only allow access from hybrid joined devices. We'll leave those blank for this example. If you do select multiple conditions for access, there's an option to require all controls or just one control. This changes it from an OR to an END statement. Click Select to continue. That is what we need to set to enable MFA for Azure Virtual Desktop. Notice at the bottom we have the option for Report Only on or off. It's a good idea to use report only for new policies. That helps us review how the settings are applied and avoids accidentally locking users out. Let's leave it as read only and create. We can use the what if function to test what happens if a user logs in. Let's select what if. Select the user that's part of the group we added to the policy. We'll select our user. Test one, user one for this example. For the cloud apps, let's select any cloud app. And we're going to change it to a selected app. And here again, we're going to find Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows Virtual Desktop. And again, this app ends in 8D07. We'll select that. So far, we've specified what if test one user one logs into the Azure Virtual Desktop application. There are other settings we can use for additional testing, but for this example, we're going to go all the way to the bottom and click what if. If we scroll down some more, it returns the policy AVD MFA policy. That policy requires MFA and is in the report only state. That indicates our policy will apply to users when logging into AVD. Next, we'll sign on with a user that has access to AVD. This will give us data we can view in Insights and Reporting. Let's open a private window so we can sign in with a different account. From here, log into AVD. 
We could use a desktop client also. For this example, though, I'm just going to use the web client. There's no MFA prompt. That's because we're in report only mode on that policy. We don't need to connect to a remote desktop or app session. Just AVD will give us the information we need. Let's close the browser window. Next, we'll go back to conditional access policies. Insights and reporting. If you don't have logging enabled for Entra ID, check out my previous video on configuring Entra ID to send log data to log analytics. Make sure the workspace you're sending Entra ID logging information to is applied. And for this example, the guide is off. From here, we can select the policy to narrow down the results to just the policy we're working on. AVD MFA policy. It can take a minute or two for the logging data to show up in insights. I'm gonna pause here and come back once it's ready. Okay, that didn't take long at all. Let's look at user action required under impact summary. That indicates the number of events marked as report only. Let's select that tile. And if we scroll down, we can see the user with the event count. That indicates the sign-in would have required a user action, but the policy was in report only mode. So that's good. That means our user data is getting logged and it's also showing there would have been a user action, but it's in report only mode. We're gonna verify that MFA works next. First, let's go back to conditional access policies. We'll open the policy, AVD MFA policy for this example, and we'll switch it to on and save. Let's reopen a private browser session and sign in with the user who is in that AVD user group. Again, I'm using a private browser so I can sign in with different credentials. And this user is a member of the group that's targeted by the policy. And now we're getting an MFA prompt. This user has been onboarded for MFA already. If the user hasn't configured MFA, they would get a prompt instructing them to do so. That is how to enable MFA for Azure Virtual Desktop users with a conditional access policy. I hope this helps you better understand how to create a conditional access policy to enforce MFA for Azure Virtual Desktop. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.